Hello, I'm Atuba George, and hey, today is Friday. Praise God. Now, why, why, why are we so excited about Friday? Yeah, because listen, some of you go to work within the week and you may not have time to listen to this broadcast, but weekends you take time and listen from Monday till Friday and just enjoy the word of the Lord and allow allow your spirit to be to be to be influenced by truth and allow the Holy Spirit to fellowship with you. Praise God. Now that's why I love Fridays. And I pray that this weekend will be the best ever you've experienced in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now then, can we call for that daily bread before going to today's broadcast? Join me in faith this Friday morning and say, Father, I demand for my daily bread and I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, listen. God wants you alive and well. He wants you to do well. Why are we talking about the judgment of God? I'm trying to get you to understand how God reasons. I'm trying to open up the mind of God to you. Because this will help you. A lot of people live in darkness where the knowledge of God is concerned. So, so in darkness, they try to form things. But until the true light comes... You'll be walking in darkness. Now, I was sharing yesterday about an intercessor. That's how I ended yesterday. And it's important I continue from there because there are lots of things that are important. An intercessor must be a friend of God. The ministry of an intercessor. You see, that's why the the ministry of the intercessor has a measure of the prophetic ministry or the prophetic gift. And then also, the teaching gift is very important. Now you can covet these things. If you feel that God has called into the place of intercessor, intercession, you need these two things, prophetic insight and the teaching gift. Now, the teaching gifts, understand, it's not, you see, let me, let me, let me, I think I should, I should tell you this right now. The ministry is not just to stand before people. Nah. You see, that's why people, a lot of people confuse these things. There are many people in ministry that you don't see, you don't know them. You don't know them. But their ministries are so vital before heaven. But you don't know them. You don't hear about them. But what they do for the kingdom, now I'm not just talking about money. There are those who give money, but we've talked about offerings. If, if God does not accept your person, he doesn't accept your money. Even though your money is used for the church. But then there are people who do lots of spiritual work in the kingdom that you don't know about. They, they bring forth counsel. They bring forth wisdom. So an intercessor, for example, you know, most times intercessors are not known. They are not known. Because the job they do is mostly in private, not in the physical, not in the open. So when I say the intercessor will need a prophetic insight or the prophetic gift and the teaching gift, it's not so that he can stand and explain to people. No. The prophetic, because he needs the ability to see. See? He needs the ability to see. Because a watchman stands on the watchtower. And why is he standing on the watchtower? So he can see a pharaoh, physically speaking. He can see a pharaoh. And sometimes with the aid of a binoculars, oh, he can see very far. Now, why does he need to see very far? So that he can make judgments before that good thing or that bad thing comes. Now, most times people think intercessors are just looking out for bad things. No, even good things. 
So he sees and then he warns the people. You see that now? So he needs the prophetic insight or the prophetic gift to be able to see. Then he needs the teaching gift because the teaching gift comes with understanding. He needs the teaching gift to interpret what he is seeing. I was sharing with you last week about the vision I saw. Now, if I didn't have understanding, I would have run to town warning, oh, something is about to happen. But because I knew I can't give that warning until I've received direction from the Lord. There are many people that come out to announce things. They saw quite all right, but they were not sent to announce it. And they end up looking like false prophets. You know why they are looking like false prophets? Because what they saw was true. But because they were not sent to announce it, other people that saw the same thing have handled it. You see that? So a prophet sees somebody is about to die. <clears throat> and he goes to announce, Oh, so so person, I saw him dead. Another person sees that that same person is about to die. And he said, Lord, why are you telling me? You know, if you, have, if you are telling me, it means it will happen. Because we don't see certain things. I have a covenant with God. I don't have to tell you about it. So, so the fact that you've told me means, so is there anything you want me to do? Sometimes he'll tell me, okay, this is what I want you to do. Okay, Lord, we'll do it. The moment that is done, that thing is over. The other prophet that saw and wasn't sent to go declare, see, because it's not every time we declare things that God sent us to declare, even though what we are declaring is what we saw. So, he goes to say it. And we have to pray, we have to pray, we have to pray. And they don't pray. You see, they don't pray. The fact that he stood in front of a congregation and said, we have to pray, let us pray. Hey, kabo, shakaba, it doesn't mean they have prayed. You only know you have prayed concerning that situation when the Lord begins to give you wisdom and instruction on what to do. But there is the other prophet or the other man that God reveals the same thing to. He doesn't tell anybody. He doesn't come out in the open. He, just like Abraham, he said, Lord, will you do wrong? Abraham didn't go to Sodom. Now he had his he had his nephew in Sodom. He could have sent messengers immediately. Guys, go to Sodom, go and tell Lord to preach and tell everybody that destruction is coming. He stood before the Lord and handled the matter. And he handled it. Now you see how Abraham was graduating in, in his dealing with the issue of Sodom. 50, 50. If you see 50, will he destroy? God actually was willing. Okay, if I say, because he loves to interact. If I see 50, I will not destroy. Abraham didn't go straight and say, Lord, I lie, he can't destroy, he can't destroy, he can't destroy. Because God didn't tell him, look, uh -uh. Abraham knew the condition of Sodom. He knew. But then, Abraham was just, since God spoke to me, he's giving me the opportunity to speak to. So will I keep quiet? Let me make a contribution. That's what Abraham did. And then he got to 10. And God said, if I see 10, I will not destroy. Abraham said, let me leave it here. And God went to Sodom. He couldn't find 10. If he had found 10, he would have postponed that judgment to another time, even though the situation was critical because there was an intercessor. And the intercessor didn't come with a crowd. The intercessor was just one man dealing with God who came down from heaven to see. Now, I, I know I heard someone talking one time. I say, how, how do you think God will come down from heaven? Can't you see it from heaven? You don't understand what the Bible meant by he came down from heaven to see. He actually came down to see. Now, that seeing, it means to confirm and also give them another opportunity. Do you know if the men of Sodom, that very night the angels came to Sodom, you know, they came to Lot's house. And, and they said, hey, Lord, bring those men that came to you who want to um, have sexual dealings with them. Bring them out. If the men that night 
had just said, you know what, Lord? We're not in the mood today. See, just go. Do you know Sodom would have been saved? It would have been saved. God would have postponed the joy because when he, what he came to confirm, he didn't see it. But it was the actions of the men that aggravated the judgment. God had told them, go. So the angels came and said, hey, Lot, we're here, we're here to burn down the city. Burn down the city. Whoa, they are. That's our intention. But if the men of Sodom had behaved that night, they would have spared their lives. Even though no one preached to them. Because the angel didn't say, so, um, Lord, go and preach to them. No. But their actions made the angels look, Lord, do you have anyone apart from these in this place? Those are two daughters. Do you have anyone? They say, yeah, I do. I have some daughters that are married. Let me go talk to my son in law. He went and uh, they say, get out. Nonsense. False prophets. And he, the, the angel said, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. They took the ones with them and they left. And such living was by strict instruction. That's why his wife turns to salt, even though they intended to save her. She didn't keep the instruction that was given. And that's what happened when you're in the wrong place and God is bringing judgment to that place. See, because your salvation is by the, an act of mercy, you must pay close attention to every instruction given. If you fail one, you get involved in the judgment. I'm, I'm teaching you how God acts. These are the judgments of God. So an intercessor, seeing, must be able to interpret accurately. So he can, because the intercessor's job is also to give counsel. Counsel to, to the Lord. Huh? The Bible says, who has known the mind of God that he may instruct him? You know the answer I gave to that question? We have the mind of Christ. What does that tell you? We can sit with God in judgment and argue out the matter. And by intelligence, get God to see another side of that issue. Now, when an intercessor doesn't understand the truth about the personality of God, and that's what the teaching ministry does. The teaching ministry gives you insight about the truth and the heart of God. A teacher is not the one who, read, who has read several books and is telling according to social definition, according to that one, according to that No, no, no. That's a school teacher. You see, a teacher in the Word of God is one who has been given the anointing to see truth in God and the ability to explain and express that truth. That's who a teacher is. Not by reading, it's by the anointing. So a teacher functions like a prophet. The same way a prophet sees by the anointing. A teacher teaches by the anointing. A teacher understands by the anointing. So the teacher opens and he sees what you don't see. Now he must be able to communicate what he's seeing and it will make sense to you. See that now? That's the teaching means. So when an intercessor have these two things combined, oh, he, he will be an effective intercessor. Because now he sees, and let me tell you this secret about the spiritual realm. As long as something have, even if a decision has been taken in the realm of the spirit, before the day of his execution, and you see it, you have the ability to intercept it. I'm telling you the truth. You have the ability to intercept it. If you can see it before the decision is taken, the physical manifestation comes. You have the ability to change it. That's another day's talk. And my time is up. Praise God. I believe the Lord has helped us this week. <laughs> Praise God. And listen, if you open your heart to Him, He will teach you things. He's our teacher. He will guide you into all truth. And like I told you, if you have questions, you need more clarity, contact us. And we'll be willing, more than willing to help you. Praise God. Father, we bless you. I declare this weekend that your grace will go before us and your spirit will guide us into every truth. 
we will manifest your will and purpose in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.